Hello, in this video I'm going to speak about the following topic shop drawings, specification, corrosion protection and painting, testing and inspection. Let's start with the shop drawings. What does it mean the shop drawings? So there are different types of drawings which will be created for any construction project. The architectural drawing, mechanical drawing, electrical drawings, and also the structural drawing. In the structural drawing, the structural consultant, we put the enough information on the drawing to show the intent of our design, member size, and the different elements of the, of the structural member. However, the supplier for this material uh, sometimes they have to build the member on site and in other member they have to build that in the shop. So we prefer to get the, most of the elements done, done or created in the shop because that they have different or better environment to work on, uh, in it. Now the shop drawings, when they start the manufacturing process, the supplier will create drawings and these drawings show the intent and the details of the member they are going to build that's based on the drawings they have for example if you have reinforced concrete members then the reinforcing bars the length and the size and the cut and overlapping length should be should be created and sent to to the uh, consultant to review if you have windows, if you have any other item, it should be created first in, in the shop and they show them what are they going to build and after they get the approval from the consultant, then they start in the shop to build this member. Now, when we are looking at the structural steel members, for example, here we have a structure steel member a beam and this beam is W760 times 182 so this beam here is in the structural drawing is between 5 and 6 that was one of our project in the office and here the supplier give us the length of the beam and also show some connection detail location of some opening and gusset plate and here this connection at the end when you start looking at this drawing the first thing you have to consider who has created this drawing because this drawing should be provided by a professional engineer or at least reviewed and confirmed that this drawing is matching the Canadian standard so we need to have a professional engineer stamp on it so if you don't have professional engineer stamp on it, don't waste your time and look at the drawing from the beginning because you don't know if you have a professional engineer, what should has he changed on this drawing. And also the professional engineer has the liability to cover any mistake and he has the knowledge also to correct any, any calculation or to connect any connection detail. So what they provide in the shop drawing as details for us to look at. They provide the length if they have an opening and the location from the opening and the end connection. And here they said the beam has a 20 millimeter camber and camber is an upward deflection going upward. And when you apply the dead load on it, this member will be straight. So that's one of the ways to reduce the deflection of the member. And if you reduce the deflection of the member, then you can work with a lighter member and you can save to your client uh, money your, uh, through the saving of the beam size. So you can write some con uh, comments on the drawings and at the end you can't approve it until you have the enough information and then also the uh, professional engineer stamp on it. So here there is another part, another, another beam and this beam has 12 millimeter camber and that's W760 times 314 you see how heavy this beam is and also it is 12 millimeter 12 millimeter camber so you can have here some comments but all these drawings have been 
rejected because there is no stamp on it. And here you have the stiffener at the end. Normally for the structural steel, if you have the if you have the steel member is connected through a gusset plate, so that's most of the common when you have the, the column is continuous. So that, that should be a good and straightforward connection. When you have your steel member sits on a support, this support can be reinforced concrete wall or even a cap plate of a structural steel member, then most of the time you need to have a stiffener to support the, the web against puckling. So that's very important item to look at. So we have web stiffener, we have the thickness, but as, as I mentioned before, these drawings have been rejected because of ma many missing details that includes also the uh, stamp of the uh, professional engineer. Now the other part for the shop drawing, which also in the steel construction, you can have cold formed steel like that. And when they, they have this member, they have to start cutting the members in the shop and they deliver it as, uh, as you can see here, and as uh, almost in, in, in connected part, then they can assemble that on the site. And in this picture, you can see one of the shop drawing of one wall panel. And this wall panel has now the width of 1422 millimeter. And you here, here you have the stud, the exterior stud, and here you have a build up section or jump stud. And here you have the small studs in the underneath the uh, the window cell and the if you look at the drawing here what are the component of this shop drawing for the cold form steel so you can have here the bottom plate the bottom plate is here is about is a track 600t 125-97 600 is 6 inch wide and the t is stands for track 125 means 1.25 inches the the width of the flange and 97 is the thickness of the material you divide that by 1000 and that will be in inches so you have here the bottom plate and the length and here you can have the top plate which is here at this part is another track around the opening you can have here the jump king, uh, king and jack stud header header and header you have the sill plate also at the top around the opening uh, top cripple that's here the top cripple and there are three pieces one two three and they are studs the same size of the 600t uh, s162-54 three pieces the length of each one is 697 and the angle is 90 degree and you have the bottom cripple this here are another three and they are the same studs and the height here is 366 you can see here 370 but minus some connection and clearance that will be 366 90 and another 90 for the angle so you have the studs from the outside you have here the uh, 600 s 162 54 two pieces and so on so you can see here's a component of the of the cold form steel steel stud as wall panel from the shop drawing and as i mentioned before here you have the opening and for example the width of this opening 946 and the height is 161662 here is the the height of the window and that here is the width now uh, when we review this drawing or if you are working on on this project and you receive this drawing from your steel supplier one thing is you want to do is you have to contact the structural engineer to review that and of course you have to get the the stamp of a professional engineer and on the other side the structural engineer will review the member sizes and the, the component and he makes sure that it can carry the load and the top the top beam here is, is, is strong enough so we have as a structure as a structural engineers many information to look at and make sure this wall is strong enough however we will not check the opening of the window and this opening might be might be right as a size wise with the width and the height however it might 
not be right from the height above the floor level. 370 might not be wrong. For From the structural point of view, we cannot control that. That has to go to the architect. And the architect will check the dimensions of the opening, the height, and he will make sure that it will fit within his facade configuration. And he also should review the opening side with the window, and that will include the window frame or not. He has different items to look at. So what are the goal of these informations is you don't need to have only one consultant to review the drawing. You need to get as many consultants as you can to review the shop drawing to make sure that it can satisfy the structural requirement and it can satisfy the architectural requirement from the windows, for example, location, height, and dimensions. And you might, you might have an opening for any duct or any opening outside for, for wiring or any mechanical electrical connections uh, that, has to be, that has to be reviewed from many consultants, not only from one consultant. In a nutshell, what we have here, the shop drawing, the goal of the shop drawing is to get a confirmation from all consultants that what the manufacturer will going to build within his shop is acceptable from the consultant and the designer of the project. That can apply to any member in a construction project. What are the content? The content from the structural point of view, you want to have the length of the member, you want to have the dimension, you want to have the opening location, you can see the connection detail, you can see the if there are any stiffener or any camber or any other dimension for for the beam which are related to the to the project and you want to make sure that it has all the information required that there is no work on site will be needed. When they have the for example the steel beam the steel beam will be delivered from the shop to the to the location to the site and built and no additional opening or stiffener will be required so the requirement will be as much as you can from the from the dimension but here my what i'm getting at again regarding the liability issue and confirmation that this shop drawing is acceptable and have been created by by a professional you need to have a professional stamp from a professional engineer from the province you are working on and in this case here in Toronto we are working with in Ontario the administration when you receive the drawing you have to look at the content make sure that it has all the right information and then you can ship it it depends on if you have a project manager then you can ship the drawing to the project manager and he will have the to distribute the drawing to the different consultant or if you are already the project manager then you can have to forward the drawing to the prime consultant or the different consultant in the project to make sure that they review it and at the end you can get one of three or, or one of four uh, review for example you can have the opinion of the consultant as approved or reviewed done there is nothing more to do you have to manufacture it you can get another input which can be reviewed as noted they say in general it is acceptable however you have to add additional information or to have to add something on this member but the consultant doesn't find this information is critical to stop you from creating the the member the other one is it can be reject and resubmit rejected and resubmit so that means they have found a big item or missing information and they cannot accept this drawing as they are so you have to modify them add additional members or additional information and then you can resubmit it to get their approval for it and it's an advice if you are working on a construction project please don't start manufacturing your item or your member unless you get the input from the consultant about 
the shop drawing and that you can get something at least reviewed as noted which means you can start working on it without any additional delay after you get that you forward your drawing to the to the uh, subcon uh, subcontractor to start the manufacturing process and also you have to keep the approval the of the consultant for your records 